We recently discussed a curious find discovered within the tundras of Antarctica. An enigmatic anomaly seemingly sliding to a halt on the ice caps of the South Pole. We noticed the inaccessibility of the landmass, now permanently encased in over two miles of ice, capable of challenging the most experienced of venturer. It is a place little explored, yet regardless of this inhospitality, if it could be proven to possess any trace or series of ancient ruins, then it would prove beyond doubt that our continued posit that there exists a paradigm within historic academia and that there is indeed a huge chapter of our history now lost, the knowledge of our origins, and these said paradigms would be proven as incorrect. For if there exists a now lost ancient civilization frozen and preserved beneath these ice caps, not only would their age be enormous, but their ruins a true testament to their capabilities. There are many ancient ruins here on our Earth, which we believe are undoubtedly older than we are now told. The Great Pyramids, the gigantic megaliths found at Baalbek in Jordan, Yangshan Quarry in China, all these ruins, and many more, could be far older than we are currently being taught, and their erosion-resistant characteristics will indeed ensure their existence far into the future. Many internet sleuths trawl pictures of not only Antarctica, but the reels of photos sent back by the Mars rovers, searching for ancient signs of life. And although many of the claimed ruins in Antarctica remain sketchy and little photographed, the next item of interest we find incredibly curious, and one of the driving reasons for this is due to these possible ruin similarities to one of the most impenetrable of them all the fortress of Sacsayhuaman. However, what makes this image of a possible outer wall truly special is its possible scale. If indeed factually true, and this is indeed the remnants of an ancient fortress outer barrier, it would be over two miles in length. With the continent of Antarctica being a frozen tundra for over 20 million years, if these claimed ruins turned out to indeed be of artificial origins, it would undoubtedly force the age of man back by many millions of years. We hope more is done to explore the true nature of this curious feature. Even if it is nothing but a landmass, it is unquestionably highly compelling. When within this modern world of academic study, a ruin is found, a ruin of such astonishing feature or size, one which is clearly an out-of-place artifact within the realm of its accompanying modern paradigm. No matter how amazing, how historically important, due to its sheer inexplicability, one will rarely hear about it in popular debate. And one such ruin is Kat Shibib. The archaeological site was first identified by British diplomat Sir Alec Kirkbride in 1948, an ancient wall over 93 miles long, whose origins are predictably unknown. Ever since its initial discovery, a range of disciplines, including archaeologists, scientists, and anthropologists, have studied the wall. Yet the date of the Khat Shabib's construction, however, is still claimed as unknown, regardless of it also being claimed as, quote, widely debated by archaeologists. Regardless of this claim, many will have never heard of this spectacular ancient ruin, a reality we claim not by coincidence, but design. Recent study of the wall by the Aerial Archaeology and Jordan Project have found that it runs north-northeast, south-southwest, spanning a total unbroken distance of 66 miles. However, they also discovered sections where two run parallel, this for an additional substantial distance. Quote, if we add the spurs and stretches of parallel wall, the total length would be about 150 kilometers or 93 miles, wrote David Kennedy, a professor at the University of Western Australia, and Rebecca Banks, a research assistant at Oxford University in a paper published recently in the journal Zeitschrift for Orient Archaeology. It is unquestionably a remarkable ancient ruin, one evident of a once highly capable, 
yet now lost civilization. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling. There have recently been some astonishing academically contradictory discoveries unearthed throughout Europe. Archaeologists have been discovering a network of underground tunnels, apparently somehow cut throughout the Stone Age, which cover the territories of Spain, Turkey, and most of the European continent. Their approximate age, according to funded archaeologists, is no less than 12,000 years. Yet how people living within the Stone Age, people without any form of metal tools or chisels, managed to cut thousands of miles of tunnel systems is clearly a considerably contradictory mystery. Thousands of underground tunnels stretching from Scotland to Turkey that have, predictably, placed the many submissive, order-taking funded scientists throughout the academic world at a dead end to explain. However, if one presumes, as the evidence we share here on our channel often suggests, that a past, now lost, highly advanced civilization once flourished here on our Earth, their creation is less of a challenge to explain. Yet the purpose for their existence will remain an enigma. Were they created by a group attempting to hide from something? Or possibly, they were ancient smuggling tunnels left by members of this lost civilization once used to smuggle items from ancient settlement to settlement found throughout Europe. German archaeologist Dr. Heinrich Kusch, in his book Secrets of the Underground Doors to the Ancient World, states that the tunnels were dug beneath hundreds of Neolithic settlements all across Europe, and the fact that so many tunnels have survived indicates that the original network was much larger than that which still survives. Quote, in Bavaria alone, we discovered 700 meters of these underground tunnels. In the Austrian Styria, we found 350, and throughout Europe there were thousands of such tunnels, from the north of Scotland stretching to the Mediterranean itself." End quote. The fact that these tunnels have been identified as having been cut at least 12,000 years ago should indicate to all those still with the capacity of critical thought that they are undoubtedly far older than this, as to state that they were somehow cut by people with literally no tools to their disposal, to us, seems laughable. The tunnels are all relatively narrow, being about 70 centimeters in width, just enough for an adult man to travel through. In some places, there are small rooms, storage chambers and seats, clearly indicating that these cave systems were used by a number of people at a time. How did our ancient ancestors create such an awe-inspiring network of tunnels without the utilization of some form of tunneling equipment, lighting, and indeed smelted metal tools? It is not surprising to us or anyone who has paid attention to the limited tale of events put forward by academia that these tunnels remain a perplexing ancient artifact for them to explain. Yet we feel they are clear evidence of a past civilization having crudely cut these tunnels, possibly for some nefarious reason we are yet to unravel. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. Thanks to improvements in modern archaeological technologies, and indeed the evolution of satellite resolution imagery of our spinning living blue marble, we are fortunately entering an era where thanks to penetrative strata photography, the last remaining legacies of what we have long claimed would be found, that of once highly capable global lost civilization or possibly many. And yet another proof of this hypothesis has recently been rediscovered in Iran. A gigantic artificial wall, measuring approximately 71 miles in length, extending from the mountains of Bamu to an area near the town of Jamarg, Iran, has been exposed. To put this ancient feat into perspective, computer systems have estimated that more than 1 million cubic meters of stone would have had to have been quarried, transported, and placed where they now lay, and this is a mere remnant of its past grandeur. Quote, With an estimated volume of 1 million cubic meters of stone, its construction would have required abundant resources, this in terms of labor, materials, and tremendous toil and time wrote Sajjad Alibagi, 
PhD of the Archaeological Department of the University of Tehran, in an article published in the journal Antiquity. Although the existence of the wall, long claimed as unknown to mainstream archaeology, those who have lived nearby for millennia have known about its existence all along, knowing it as Gari Wall or Gari Chen Wall. The Venture Party state that due to the wall's poor state of conservation, the researchers are not sure who built the structure and for what purpose. In fact, they are not even sure of its exact width and height. The best estimate is about 4 meters wide and 3 meters high. Its exact purpose remains a complete mystery, one which we find highly compelling. Over a hundred years ago, a curious discovery was made in a town now named after this Upart, Rockwell within Texas. An ancient wall was unearthed, and although it was clearly of an artificial nature, its possible age predictably made a number of people in the academic world deny its artificial origins in favor of a far less likely scenario involving natural formation. Although magnetic exploration suggested that the rock wall had been where it lay for over 100,000 years, its origins have been heavily debated ever since its initial discovery. In 1852, farmers in Texas were digging a well when they discovered the wall. Conservative estimates have placed its creation some 100,000 years ago. Yet now, many believe it to actually be an antediluvian relic left by a now lost civilization some 200 to 400,000 years ago. Dr. John Geisman of the University of Texas, Dallas, tested the rocks as part of a History Channel documentary, giving credence to the denial of its artificial origins, suggesting they formed where they were, claiming that they were all magnetized in the same way. This tremendous age has led many to believe in modern paradigm, to deny a man-made origin, as this does to corroborate with the Bering Strait theory and currently upheld timelines in regards to evolution. However, there are others in similar fields who have found curious characteristics of the wall which do indeed suggest artificial origins. Geologist James Shelton, for example, and Harvard's architect John Lindsay have focused on its unique design features, including architectural elements, archways, lintel portals, and square doorway and window openings, which all suggest not only artificial creation, but functionality for humans, which nature would simply not create. The depth or past height of the wall is also an impressive legacy. The family of T.U. Wade, who moved to the area and initially made the discovery, dug to a depth of 40 feet to try and find the bottom of the wall. This excavation, however, was abandoned without finding the bottom. Years later, in 1949, Mr. Sanders of Fort Worth took up the baton and continued excavational exploration of the wall finding a number of megalithic stones at considerable depth and weighing several tons. After bringing them to the surface, mysterious pictographs were found upon them, further supporting the thesis of artificial origin. In addition, curious metal rings of modern composition were found embedded in rocks, suggesting the presence of lost technology. It would appear that the wall is indeed an antediluvian relic, one possibly submerged and subsequently buried in ancient sediment during the Great Flood. Modern studies have found that the wall is in fact six stories tall and 20 miles in length, with a number of individuals now attributing the wall to a lost civilization of giants due to its inexplicable nature. Quote, it is good when examples like rock wall appear that test our abilities and cause us to question basic Newtonian mechanistic assumptions that have not been modified for over 150 years. Physics had to abandon this approach at the turn of the century, opting instead for relativity and quantum mechanics in order to further their understanding of matter and the universe," said James Shelton, geologist from New Orleans. It is a relic which we find highly compelling.